Hi again, it's us from ESC Bubble, and we've got Anne, Joe, David, Carl, Nick, and we are here for day four reactions for another busy day. We've had another eight songs that we've been uh, having a look through, making our predictions from, and we're going to go through that as we talk about each one. First of all, on this morning, um, I was going to say the much anticipated Georgia, and there's not really much hype about it at all, but um, it was definitely an interesting performance, especially his third run through, Kyle, and uh, do you want to tell us what you thought of that? Yeah, I think it was quite clear that Tanuki was, you know, taking it easy. He knew that it wasn't about um, having to do a perfect vocal, and he was just having some fun with it, doing some very low... Uh, notes and then some very uh, high ones at the end um so I'm not going to focus on that too much and um, he did look like he'd rather maybe be anywhere else um which you know I get but it wasn't really the positive vibe to start the day off that we would probably need but um you know apart from that though was there much brought not really it was um quite basic and quite um droll if I can say that. He looked a little bit, he dressed similarly to Uku, but without the um, without bow tie untied. Um, there was a nice bit of projection, which um, put some of the lyrics sort of onto him, which which looked quite good. It was something different at least. But um, yeah, nothing inspiring really, nothing enough to, to elevate the song and it needs a lot of elevation because it's really not much of a song. I was willing last year's song back again. Um, yeah, it was not, not great for me. I can't say it's doing much. The song always has given me like a dreary Beatles B-side, um, you know, when they're sort of going through their more, I don't know, um, dirty phase. But it's just, you know, you need to find a way to elevate a song like that. And it's um, the way he's just sort of presented on stage. Yeah, you're right. He, he didn't look particularly interested. Um, there might be rehearsal phase. He might really have, a, you know, something to shine with on, on, on the big night. But... At this moment in time, he's not really um, going to be going anywhere with, with this because it's so static. And I know we've complained about a lot of static acts. And you know, I don't know, you probably wouldn't want him running around the stage to a song like this. But um, I don't know, maybe the the shots, the camera shots were just sort of so, so like long and uninteresting. And, you know, I found myself quite easy just looking elsewhere while it was on and then turning back when I heard him try some interesting notes. So... For me, it's uh, it wasn't probably the first best thing to have to wake us up from a from a you know from a from a long day yesterday. So we will do predictions on it anyway, Joe. Nah, nah, and sorry about the door, by the way. My dog keeps trying to come in. Um, no, for me, no. guys. Yep, yeah, um, non qualifier for me, definite. No, non not qualifying. I'm calling bingo full house on this one non-qualifying it's um it's not happening but um as we've all we always caveat we look forward to a more interesting second rehearsal although somebody who i think did smash the first rehearsal was uh angela peresta per i can never say this peresta is that right uh with karma and she was on second and she really was rocking the black and red look and david you're going to talk us through her first rehearsal yeah, so it wouldn't be Albania if they didn't go for black and red staging, really, would it? Um, but they had a bit of blue in there, which is uh, is something they haven't done for a while. So uh, happy to have more colours. Um, for me, this one was the biggest shock of the day. I've it's no secret I've always loved the song. Um, if you watch the the, the uh, Bubble Jury, I think I gave it a ten out of ten. Love the kind of the dr just the drama that the song gives. We don't really have any Balkan ballads this year. Um, in kind of Balkan language, um, I guess we have got Anna Soklic, but um, I, it's just so drum driven and the instrumental is fantastic. And they, since the first one we saw at Festival of Congress last year, through to now, they've developed it so much and just really built on that drama. And today's rehearsal smashed it out of the park. The camera angles, can we talk about how amazing she looked as well? She looked incredible she had her own Eleni Ferreira uh, moment when she walked out and s just seeing what she was wearing it was a shock I think for everyone but she looked stunning um she's playing with the background the graphics and the the plumes of red and blue smoke that are in the background um there's big dark storm energy going on so much drama I thought she smashed that Sasha, Sasha John Baptiste is quite hit and miss sometimes with staging but this one's definitely a hit what a glow up from the national final 
performance. I mean, that was pretty good. I mean, she, she won. So, you know, we, we knew it was good at the time. But this was incredible visually from the moment she came on stage. It, I mean, I'm loath to compare it to, to older things, but it's sort of like she was taking the fuego and giving it a bit of Greta Salome and interacting with the, you know, with the backing. It was, it was fantastic. She sounded amazing. Everything about it was, was on point. And um, I know it's been um, a song that people have been speculating about whether it would get through or not, but really, if you're going to bring a package like that, you are in contention and you're going to be doing pretty well with it. And yeah, Albania, you really stepped up and I'm really impressed. Um, it's a song in studio. Um, it's a song that's meant to be performed live, I think, and it works really good live. And I think it really gave it that extra edge it needs in a competitive sense. So let's get some predictions on this one, because obviously it's, a, it's an interesting one sandwich between Georgia and Portugal. So, uh, Kyle. Yeah, I've been uh, going back and forth with, uh, with Albania really since it was released. Um, but after seeing today's performance and now seeing all in semi two, I think this will qualify yet yeah, not comfortably but i think it will get through qualifying okay david yeah so um sandwich between georgia and portugal as you say best running order position i think ever um def definitely qualifying i think okay was it giving you karma Anne? So I had to giggle a bit there because when Kyle said, oh, I've been going back and forth and that, David gave him a look like he is going to kill him. So <laughs> brace yourself for later, Kyle. You never know. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow if you do. Um, yeah, it was my grower of the day. So I'm going to put it down as a qualification. There's caveats flying around my head, but I'll put it down as a qualifying. Not you spoiling your grower again. Joe, Sorry. go on. So... I think this is this is 11th. I think it's just the wrong side of the bar, unfortunately. I like it. I'd be quite happy for it to go through. Um, but yeah, I, I, I worry it might just miss out. Okay. One I didn't see, so I'm going to hand straight over to you, Anne, because I didn't see any of this at all. But I obviously read your blog and it um, looked like it was a interesting staging for Portugal and the Black Mamba. Yeah, actually, this one could be my grower. I, there's been so many today, I forget. But Black Mamba, we saw them at Festival de Cancel, and it was what it was, and we've all seen the video. And um, it was really weird because it came out in a 4-3 aspect, like small television aspect, but in black and white, and really looking like, oh, we're just going to get a cut and paste of what we saw um, months ago. But we didn't. I, when did, sorry, did I miss the memo that Portugal learned how to do staging? It was quite incredible what they did. Um, and I, I don't want to bandy that word around too much, but it really was. You've got the lush strings that come in um, halfway through and the fact that they've got a shadow orchestra playing um, on the backdrop and it's just sort of shadows of orchestra. But it really, it makes you go, oh, an orchestra yeah. and then Pedro goes for a little wander along the satellite stage and then there's the female who is the subject of the song uh, she's sort of walking along beside him as well and he gets to the um, satellite stage and he plays his electric guitar it was fabulous talk about doing as much as you possibly can with that song I still another um, spoiler here I still don't know if it'll qualify enough I don't know if it's going to be enough to make it qualify but it glowed it up massively and it's now in people's memory I think a bit more than it was it was a really really good job before I hand over to you Joe I get the impression from I, I did see some of their press conference that the Black Mamba looked like the sort of people that they want to have control over their creative element and they, they they had a lot of input into it so did you get that sense from it yeah um I, I guess so I mean for me it felt it felt quite intimate it really kind of sort of felt almost as though you were in kind of a you know, a, a cafe or a bar with having the band actually performing their live, um, rather than it being kind of like a playback of a, a um, um, audio for um, for a band setting. Um, so it, it did feel authentic in that sense. So, yeah, I, I, I got I got the impression that they were very happy with it, and I think it's it's something that's very much part of their own kind of artistic thinking in terms of how they wanted it to be presented. Um, and Anne is completely right. It it is. You know, it's completely polished. Um, it looks really, really effective. I don't like this song. 
at all, if I'm entirely honest. Um, I don't like his voice. I don't like his vocal style, although I recognise actually he is a very strong vocalist. He, you know, he he does his thing and the people that like that will, will really enjoy it. Um, it might go down well with the, the jurors, perhaps more so than, than perhaps with the, the televoting public. Um, who knows? I know that the jurors are a human just as much as any other member of the public, but um, I just kind of sort of get that feel that um, that it might do better on that side of things. Um, yeah, the the visuals were um, were gorgeous. Um, it was it was slick. You had the the shadow orchestra, but then also they used the video wall um, with kind of like an animation um, that was just really really pretty. Um, so I was engaged by it and I liked it far more than I expected to. Okay, now I'm going to do predictions. I know not everybody saw this, so you, you may have to sort of base your prediction off the small clip on the Eurovision website. So David and Kyle, um, what's your prediction? Yeah, so I'm changing my mind from yesterday um, and I think Portugal's going to squeeze out one that I said yes to yesterday, but I'm, I think it's just going to make it over the line if it will qualify. Yeah, I think this has the authenticity that I think perhaps the other male ballads in Austria and Estonia don't have. And I think that might be enough to get it over the line. But if it does qualify, it'll be close. But I'm going to put my, my nails to the mask and say, yeah, qualifying, just. OK, Anne? Um, I think it's either going to be this one or Albania who qualify. Here we go. OK, Joe. We well, see, I think this one or Austria, because I think they're both vying for that same kind of sort of or jury um, score and will both struggle perhaps with the tele vote. So I think it's perhaps between those two um, for maybe 10th and 11th, um, who knows. Um, but I, I'm going to say, yeah, I don't want it to. Okay, that's a very soft yes, right. Look, if you're comparing it with um, Albania, Albania is going through over that. I'm, I'm quite convinced about that. If it's with Austria, um, oh, I don't know. Um, you know, uh, which one is the jury bait? Who knows? But um, I will have to see second rehearsals, but I'll, I'll stick it in non-qualifying for now. But you know, with room for manoeuvre, I guess. So final act this morning was Victoria and growing up is growing old. Now, I know a lot of people seem to really like this. It's There's a huge amount of hype. Whether or not that hype is kind of sort of genuine or not, I don't really necessarily get a feel for that. I see it really high in the odds, but I see very few people telling me, oh, that's my favourite, I'm really going to vote for it. Um, whereas everything else up there, I do. Um, so I do wonder if it's perhaps just a bit kind of artificially high. And what I saw today, um, I have to say this, I, I don't get it at all. Um, I'm sure, you know, she's lovely. She's got her own kind of sort of artistic vision with this. And I'm missing it completely. Um, for me... I just find it really dull. Um, I don't connect with the emotion that she's trying to give off. I don't know if I'm just missing it. For me, I just see a, a girl on a rock. She sits on a rock. She kind of sings a bit. I kind of find it a bit whiny. Um, she gets up, she puts her hand in the sand and it just kind of finishes. I don't get much kind of sort of rise and fall with it or I don't get a journey. It doesn't take me anywhere. Um, I just, yeah, there's, I, I just don't know what it is that I'm missing. Genuinely, I don't, I don't see it. I don't get it. Um, it was my number 39 um, before the rehearsals. Um, if anything, I know there's only 39 in it, but if anything, it's now my number 40. I just really did not enjoy it at all. Okay. Can you be more positive about it, maybe, David? <laughs> yeah, so... I think it's one of those songs that's not going to appeal to everyone, a bit like the queuing in 2018. There were people that thought her voice was like nails to a chalkboard, um, yet there were people that saw it as beautiful, saw it as something that was a moment, and um, ultimately she did quite well, left-hand side. I think, um, being honest, do I think Bulgaria's going to win? No, I don't think I've ever thought really that it's in contention to win, but I do think it's going to do really, really well, um, definitely on the left-hand side. And um, for me, I, I, you talk about the journey, it's obviously the whole stage is based on a journey through effectively time. Obviously, you've got the photos of her as a child and with her family. You've got the, the pun that I quite like. I think it's quite funny of the sands of time, obviously, is quite a concept and she's touching the sands of time. Um, and just in general, the, the, the vision of the staging, it looks like she's traveling, it's floating, this, this rock, the sandstone, whatever, 
it's floating on the water and I personally just think it looks absolutely incredible um and I had questions over how they were going to stage it beforehand because I ever back in 2018 already did that kind of thing with the holograms of family and uh, and love etc I thought that was quite effective um but for me I think it's almost brought it back to life I I, I had gone a little bit off it I, I'd listened to it perhaps too much um but for me now it's back up there my favorites and I I think the reaction has it, I mean it's shortened in the odds again I think there's been a lot of positive uh, comments on Twitter even from people that I know are deeply against the song um, and I don't honestly know what they could have done more to, to get it up there I think it's a real intimate moment um, and that's something that we're missing with a lot of the favourites even Fritz and Wood stuff later um, so I think from that standpoint it's been a yeah I, I'm really impressed by it they've done a great job the colour scheme the, the whole setting it's, it's age appropriate for her um, whilst also I believe staying very true to who she is as an artist and I really like it. Well, a range of opinions there so let's see if everybody's on the same page with predictions. Anne? Um, undoubtedly qualifier yeah. Okay jo uh, Joe? Um, growing up is going home. Non so you're saying non-qualifier? Yeah I, I just can't see why anyone would vote for it I just there's just nothing there. Okay uh, Kyle? Yeah, I think this is going to appeal to a really um, quite young demographic. It's very similar to things like Olivia Rodrigo, Tate McCray, that's really popular now. I think it's going to really appeal to young people and it will qualify with these and I think it did very well. I thought it looked really good. Yeah, likewise, I think it would probably be top three in the semi-final and probably top ten on the final. Definitely qualify. It's near the bottom of my own personal rankings, but Joe, I do think it will qualify because I think I can see the appeal of it. Um, as Carl just said, Tate McRae, maybe earlier Billie Eilish. I don't know, but I'll have it as a qualifier because I want to be right more than anything. Right. So we had lunch. We had a bang <laughs> after lunch with Finland and Blind Channel and the Dark Side. And Anne, were you rocking along or were you blind to their performance? Yeah, I've loved this song since we first saw it or first heard it. Um, if anything, I was a little bit disappointed with what they did on the staging because it was so very similar to what we saw at UMK. Um, they taped up their middle fingers red, so that's the way they're putting their middle fingers up rather than actually, which is nice to see. Um, and there's uh, a few, py the pyros were weird because we got to see pyros in the third run through. And uh, right at the beginning, there was pyro, pyro everywhere. And then it kind of just stopped. And then it started again a little bit and then it just stopped again. It was really weird. The placement of them just didn't seem right, but obviously they've got time to work on all of that. Another thing that really gets to me as well is how incredibly similar it sounds to the studio track. I don't know how they do it. I love the guitarist who looks a bit like Josh Widdicombe when he um, spins around and puts his guitar around. I just absolutely adore him. But yeah, it sounds incredibly similar to the studio track. I don't know quite how they manage it, but um, yeah, I love it still but I, they could have done more. I wish they'd given me something different from what I've already seen. The song isn't really my style, but I've loved it ever since I first heard it and, and at UMK as well. Um, they were definitely playing around with things today because as you say, they, they tried pyros, they tried a different type of run through as well. But at this moment, it just seemed a little bit disjointed to me. Um, I, I, I get the impression that they will make a lot of changes to it. But as a, as a live concept, it's fantastic. Do you know what I mean? As an arena song, uh, just as, you know, AWS really worked in a, an arena, I think this will as well. Although that one's just squeaked through, so hopefully this one will be a bit more safer on the qualifying side. But on a day where a lot of the songs are quite, you know, drab, this is, you know, uh, as, a, as a sonic, you know, piece of music it, it, it's probably the highlight of the day and I think just based on that being in the second half of the semi-final I think it'll be fine I'm not supposed to do uh, predictions yet I'll come back to that and start with David on his prediction yeah it definitely woke me up after my lunch uh, post-lunch nap so uh, um, I'm just saying qualifying yeah um, I think it's a bit more accessible than AWS was which means I, I think it'll do a bit better if easy qualifier yeah good point Joe yeah, I think you're right, Nick. It wakes us all up after a, a run of kind of, yeah, fairly, fairly kind of sort of drab 
um, songs. You know, there's three or four slow let songs. Let it go. Let Bulgaria go. <laughs> <laughs> um, but not much <laughs> Bulgaria. I mean, I mean Portugal. I mean Georgia. Um, so it, th this really will stand out, I think, coming straight after that because the contrast um, just couldn't be bigger. So yes, absolutely going through. Um. It's going to stand out for sure. However, I just worry that it might get lost with all the gimmicks and um, different sorts of staging because it is such a, just a full on, this is a rock band performance and it's not got a massive sandstone. It's not got, um, a, they're not using the satellite stage. They're not, it's just them there doing their thing. And if people get taken in more with moving platforms and that's my only worry. Um, but I want it to go through, so I'm going to say qualify. I think it will qualify on the, on the strength of the song alone and their engagement with viewers. And yeah, it doesn't have many, you know, big sort of staging moments, but I don't think it needs it. So I've, I'm keeping it as a qualifier for now, but I understand what you're saying. Um, so next, um, you've got some of the Baltic team here who may have an opinion, but I'm going to start on Latvia to Mantatina, Moon is Rising with you, Carl. Yeah, so it really, um, they were expecting a lot from Samantha. She is an amazing performer, powerhouse vocalist, and you knew that we were always going to get something like intense and quite incredible on stage. Um, it really brought out the Celtic in me. I felt like I was at a St. Patrick's Day parade in Chicago. It was green, 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 and then orange. And I was like, oh, it's quite Irish watching it. Um, I felt a little bit disjointed. I wanted something a bit more coherent, really. Um, I felt like it was very much Samantha and very much the backing singers, dancers, whatever, doing their own two things. Um, I did like the background, the, the crown made of, of the hands coming in and, and Samantha doing her thing with that. Um, but I just didn't feel that the, the message of the song was really brought through with that staging. It felt a bit like she was you know, having a great time and the wall of noise of her amazing vocal was there, but I didn't quite get the, the strength of the empowering message that the video has. Um, so yeah, I was left a little bit cold by it. We always talk about pathway to qualification and sell me it. I'm really struggling. I agree completely with Kyle because the whole video the whole journey of her getting to Rotterdam has been that it's about female empowerment, that it's about strong women, that it's about things. And where was that on the stage? She was amazing. Her girls were amazing. It looked gorgeous. That bit where she um, goes to the middle and she looks up and then the camera's looking down on her and the crown of hands comes round her like, oh, that was lovely. I just live for that. And obviously vocals absolutely on point and she's even ad-libbing ad at the end of it I was watching the press conference afterwards and she was saying my girls always say to me well I don't know what you're going to do with this song she thinks I never like to see it the same twice <laughs> yeah that's not how Eurovision works Samantha it really isn't. so um yeah it was, <laughs> it was quite amusing but um yeah I and um I believe half of the Baltic uh, Baltic people spoke to the head of press today and um I mean, we don't have pyros. When I say we, I mean Latvia. Sorry, don't have pyros. There's no, there's nothing other than a, there's a flashy backdrop which makes it look a bit sparkly. But yeah, I was so nervous beforehand. It was absolutely terrifying. Um, yeah, I mean, she, given the constructs of everything, I think they could have done a little bit more with the staging. But Samantha's just going to do Samantha. We're being really chatty today. I'm going to rush us through the predictions because time is not on our side on this one. So, Joe, quickly, predictions. Um, so, I think possibly not, but giving up hope, not my case. Okay. <laughs> David? <laughs> uh, yes to Samantha, but no to qualifying. Yeah, I'm sorry. This is a no hope. I'm really sorry, Latvia, but back to the drawing board. Sorry, Samantha. No. Um, no hope is a little bit harsh, Carl. I was getting to like you quite a bit. Um, <laughs> so uh, it's a no, but I will love you forever till the end of time, Samantha. I've got to get rid of seven. <laughs> <laughs> Samantha, yes. Big 100% yes. Qualification, 100% no. Right, let's move on. I'm so sad she's not there with still breathing, by the way. And, I think and that, that too, it, definitely. But yeah. 
yeah sorry okay. move on that's okay <laughs> right switzerland was next uh much anticipated high in the bookies odds was john tears going to produce with to Lunivers? And we are going to Joe first on this one. Yeah, so this is another one of the, the big favourites. And this is one where maybe I didn't quite get the hype last year or indeed um, this year. Um, but I was absolutely sold on it today. It's it's not been anywhere near my, my, my top 10, but it really kind of sort of exceeded the expectations that I had um, for this song. I was really worried that we were going to get a kind of sort of Duncan-esque um, staging with John at the piano and it was just going to be really strong vocals, lovely ballad, lovely lyrics and that was kind of going to be it um, but we didn't get that at all actually I think what we've got here is a really fantastic example of how you can stage a ballad but still make it kind of sort of very dynamic and um, look really good as well as sound really good um, and I know it's not a traditional ballad and it's 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 very much got that kind of, sort of rise in the crescendo. Um, so, yeah, he's on this um, kind of sort of platform, this kind of sort of huge prop. Um, he has kind of sort of very um, kind of sort of distinct choreo movements, nothing kind of sort of too energetic, but it looks very classy. It kind of sort of put me in the mind of kind of sort of the Loic Notet um, rhythm inside type staging in terms of the in terms of the movements that he has. Um, and vocally, absolutely incredible. Um, you know, it, it sounded, you know, as strong as, as you know, I hear it in, in studio version, which bearing in mind the, the vocal style and the range that, that he uses um, is an incredible achievement. Um, so I was actually quite blown away by it. Um, very, very surprised. David, were you blown away? Absolutely, it's uh, it's always been kind of in my top three for the whole year anyway. Um, I love last year, but it actually so far exceeded my expectations that I struggled to find words. Actually, I was gearing up all week, thinking, "Oh great, we're gonna have a week and a half of it being prepared to arcade. How lazy! It's a piano, ballads of all ballads, etc., cetera, etc." Cetera. And the Swiss team have done wonders in distance in itself as far away as possible from that. And I completely agree, Joe. I think uh, Belgium 2015, Loic Natet, that's a really good comparison. It's like a, a one-man Loic's performance. And um, I wasn't so completely on the prop originally. And and likewise, I, I will, maybe I just wasn't expecting the kind of contemporary dance moves that he was doing in Arm Waves. Um, but in retrospect, I think it really worked with the song and actually um, it, as you say, it's not a traditional ballad. It, it's got a very high BPM. It's more like a City Lights melodic ballad up tempo in a way, because the production, and especially from chorus onwards, it's quicker than most of the up tempo up tempo bangers that we have um, in BPM regards. So I think they made it just look fantastic. And the crescendo at the end, his vocal, you can't say anything bad about it. It's um, definitely a contender to win. And yeah, I'm I'm so happy that they've. Uh, it's always such a good feeling when your favourite does really well and, and you, you're always a bit nervous about the hype um, being overhyped, but I was just so happy with, with how it did and, and just so grateful that we've got that on stage. Okay, we're still pretty short on time, so this should be a formality. So just a quick qualified, unqualified, Anne? Qualify. Joe? Uh, to la qualification. Uh, guys? Yeah, qualifying, yeah, 100%. 100%. It was amazing qualifying, probably winning the semi-final. Maybe that or Iceland, who knows? Right, very quickly, we're going to move on to Denmark, Fear and Flam. Um, not even going to try and pronounce this. Over Ospar Hinan or something like that. Don't ask me to pronounce Danish words, right? Uh, Joe, we're going to go to you quickly. I know this is one of your favourite songs, but give us a brief... How, how, did, you, how did you tell? I'm wearing the T-shirt. Oh, um, wow. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, this is absolutely one of my, my favourite songs. Um, and I think it's so good to have this closing, this semi-final as well, um, because it's just so joyful. It's a party tune and it's just three minutes just to kind of sort of enjoy. It's a, it has that kind of sort of retro feel to it. Um, the vocals aren't perfect, but they don't really need to be for this, this type of performance. It's all about just bringing the party and bringing the fun. Um, and I, for one, absolutely adore it. Um, I do worry about their chances though, because I don't mean this in a neighbourly kind of sort of political kind of thing, but 
the places where you would expect votes to come for this genre of music aren't voting in the semi-final. I think this is a song that would do quite well in the final, um, but with no Germany voting, because it's very kind of sort of modern talking, it's the sort of thing that you would expect the Germans to really go big for. No Norway voting in this semi, no Sweden. Um, I, I, I struggle to kind of sort of look at where its votes are going to be coming from, unfortunately, um, because I, I really want this to be in the final because it's just so much fun and I adore it and I could listen to it and I have been listening to it all day long, um, every day since since it, it, it came out, which is very unusual for me for a Danish entry, as anyone that knows me knows. Right, I'm going straight to Carl. Yeah, um, pretty much the same from what we had from Danger Team, no real surprise there. Um, interesting that we did have backing singers on stage, unlike a lot of them this year, but we can't actually see them. Um, yeah, it's okay. It's it's the same as GMGP. It's a great end to the show. I thought it would be um, quite a big contrast to Switzerland because I was expecting him at piano. But I think Switzerland maybe takes the shine away from it a little bit. Um, however, I can still see it getting a good, like, Sir Hat type fun end of the semi vote that could potentially pull it through. Okay, quick predictions. Are you saying no, no, no to that, Anne, or is it going through? Uh, I'm full on back to the future. Is it going through? Okay, Joe. Um, it hasn't got a hope, and I'm really sad about that. David. I'd actually quite like it in the final, but I, I like I don't think it will. Uh, I'm borderline. I think it will do well with the televote and purely with the jury, but it's whether that's enough to get it to 10th at the moment. I think I've got it in 11th, so I'm going to say non qualified it's a song, it feels like a qualifier to me, but when you split it into jury and televote, like we talked about earlier, David, it was, it, it, it's not passing the test on that. So I'm gonna put it down as a non-qualifier, um, just to be on the cautious side, but oh, it's still- Oh, wow, I was the qualifier. only qualifier on that one. Super. Yeah, you were, yeah. Right, so we've got about three minutes left. So we're gonna do our, our usual uh, winner, grower and loser of the day. And Joe, you can start. Okay, so for me, um, winner, Switzerland um I thought that was that was wonderful uh, but also grower for me Switzerland um because I I had it quite not necessarily that low I had it kind of sort of maybe 15 or something like that but that's that's that shot up for me um loser sorry Vicky Bulgaria uh, -huh. uh my winner was Switzerland my grower was Portugal excellent job guys and my loser was uh, Georgia, but then it was like um, the guy who was last on the Formula One grid being given a three place penalty because Georgia was last anyway. Okay, Carl and then David. Yeah, um, winner for the day, Switzerland. I think really impressed with that. Grower for me, definitely Bulgaria. I had it in my low 20s, um, but seeing it and seeing what has been done is really growing on me. Excuse the pun. Uh, loser for the day, sorry guys, Latvia. I'm sorry. Yeah, likewise. Um, so my winner is going to be Bulgaria. Uh, sorry, Joe. Um, <laughs> one of my favourites of the whole contest, I think. Um, also Albania, though, gets a shout out. Uh, my grower, probably Portugal, actually. It's been in my bottom five, but quite liked it. Um, and Lisa, I'm really sorry, but I'm going to say that. Yeah, because I had, I had no expectations of Georgia. Yeah, that's mm. fine. I'm going to wrap off quick, quickly because um, I can see Anne twitching in the corner there. <laughs> right. So my win of the day was definitely Switzerland. Incredible. Fantastic. I wish I could have the chance to talk about it, but um, I'm sure maybe after second rehearsals, I can have my pitch on that. But great. Fantastic. Grower, I'm going to go for Albania in the sense that I loved it. National final. I didn't really enjoy it on studio and some of the tweaking they'd done, but it just came back to life today. So it had to grow for me. And then lose is really difficult because I expected Georgia to be awful. So um, mm, I'll have to stick with Georgia though. It was it, it went below my expectations and they were already zero. So <laughs> I've got to st stay with Georgia, I think. So thank you for tuning in today. Do not forget to subscribe to ESC Bubble, follow the blogs, the Twitter, and all the great articles of all the information about all the performances. And join us tomorrow because day two, not day two, part two of rehearsal start with the second <laughs> rehearsals. And we are going to be seeing a lot more and you'll be getting better clips to know if we're talking rock, rock or not. So tune back in and we'll see you then.